in less than a half hour. <laughs> well, uh, when we first got here, we, we got off on this tear yesterday because Richard Neer wrote a book about the station that we're at here in New York, uh, WNEW, which oh. was a legendary rock station. Yeah, every city has that legendary rock station that yep. was around forever. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we got here, it spelt the end of that legendary rock station, which had just been going down the crapper for many years. So it wasn't like we came in when it was on top and uh, blew it up. They were playing the worst of the worst classic rock music. Yep. Their jocks were very, very old. Classic rock, classic jocks, they called it. When I say very old, uh, most of the jocks were older, older than my dad. Yeah, and my dad's pretty old. So, uh, Carol Miller was one of the jocks, and um, we kind of butted heads a few times. Uh, she would uh, do the shift right after us. So when we were leaving, she would be coming into the studio, and usually some type of argument would ensue. She didn't like what we were doing. Yeah, because we were the... She thought it was all about the music we here were, at WWW. We were part of the new regime, and she was the old regime. Yeah, and she knew that uh, that time was ending. She truly believed it was about uh, the jocks and, and the music and talking about the artists. Right, and uh, we felt it was God just about you. hanging out and having a good time and, right. you know, screw it. Right. <laughs> and uh, she didn't think we would do well. She uh, thought we would be a, a tremendous failure here at Double Double Do Any Double Do. <laughs> yeah, she thought we would fail miserably. Yeah. So uh, all the jocks thought we would fail miserably. Yeah, she was the only one that took us on, and I respect her for that. Yeah, everyone and else would talk about you know behind closed doors and behind our backs and stuff. Remember when our crack PD uh, Gary Wall and I call him that not because he's so good, but because he, he seemed like he was on crack. Hey, our crack PD. Jimmy Kimmel's never going to come on our show. Gary today. Wall. Uh, we, we would get into such brawls with Carol that uh, he put down this thing where Carol could not see us in the hallway. Oh, I forgot about that. No, yeah. that was because of these tapes and the yep. on-air fights. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because of the fights. Oh, I forgot about this. So um, we would get done with uh, our shift at, at 7 o'clock, and she would come in here to do her shift, which started at 7. But Gary Wall said she would have to wait in the mail room right off the hallway until she saw us pass by through the little window in the door. Then she could leave the mailroom and walk down to the studio because he didn't want any more fighting going on. So she would sit in there, and we knew she was in there, so we'd hang out down here, drink beers, wait, 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 wait. Sometimes we'd send... know when she was waiting. Sometimes we'd send one guy and leave the yeah. other behind. It's like, all right, oh, if you walk past, and I'll <laughs> hang out here. She'll see one person, but she knows she's not supposed to move until two people walk past. <laughs> right. And we'd leave her in the mailroom. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we have a tapes of some of those uh, little brawls that happened during the crossovers between our show and her show. All right, so let's start with uh, the first clip, okay? Mm -hmm. This starts at all, her coming into the studio during the the, uh, the the revolution of rock that we explained yesterday, where they the uh, retrospect of 30 years of rock history. Every year was a different year yeah. of music they played all day long. It seemed like every day was another year in 30 years. This thing lasted forever. So, you know, any given day you tune in and go, okay, it's 1972 and they'd play music from 72 and have news clips and the jocks would tell about their recollections of 72 and we'd come in and be like, who gives a crap and start playing kazoo over the uh, music and, and, and singing our own lyrics to some of these classic songs and that upset them too, I think. All right, here we go. Uh, Carol Miller hates us. Here, plug in your headphones, Carol. Oh, yeah. All right. Carol is going to be representative of the people that appreciate this music and this special program, the evolution of the Rock of New York. Oh, yeah. That has been put together here on a, a WNEW. All right, so what problem mm. did you have with us yesterday, Carol? Yeah. You. I had a problem with you, the two of you. <laughs> what right. happened? No, no, what I'm happened? just kidding. Uh, she didn't like see, the fact that Anthony was playing the kazoo to all these great classic rock yeah, tunes. Well, I think they needed kazoo. These yeah. cheesy <laughs> but old classic rock songs. Yeah, how can we go from a week before we start this yeah, special goofing okay. on but old rock and then we go into but old rock and we're supposed to act like uh, we liked it? Uh, listen, first of all, it's a matter of opinion, but, you know, a lot of this stuff, including the stuff that you were ranking on yesterday, I mean, I really dig this stuff. I was playing it for people. people. I was course, there. People will I dig this it. stuff. And you know something? Wait, 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 wait. I dig this stuff, too, when I heard it on NEW, but I don't want to hear it anymore. Well, I want to move on. Problem. I want to move on to the future. Yeah, well, I want to hear it. What do you want to hear? Third Eye, Meatball, Blind? No, I want to hear the latest from the Black Crows. I want to yeah, hear the latest that. from Kiss. Yeah. 
So? The latest from the Rolling Stones. We can't play any of that this week because we have to play Marshall Crenshaw someday, some way. Well, I think this is a good trip down, uh, like, a recent memory lane. We've been doing that, that for no. 31 years. 31 years here at NEW. No, no, this has no, been no, a classic no, 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 rock no, no, station no, no, for, no, no, for no. many years. We've been going down memory lane. You don't Most know. Most of these people have every single one of these CDs at home. If they want to take a trip down memory lane, then they should play it at home. We used to go talk at home. Oh, oh, that hurts. Oh, oh my <laughs> God. Hurts. You should go talk at home. Ow. Hey, she didn't like us, you know, and, and she took us on. And that's okay by me. That's how it happens. It's still an awful comeback by her. Oh, I know. It was uh, one of those retarded Laverne and Shirley type comebacks. Take a long walk off a short pier. <laughs> we were just getting warmed up, though. Here we go. All right, how many, how many listeners did we gain today by going down memory lane playing Marshall Crenshaw uh, someday, someday? Marshall Crenshaw did a really nice Christmas concert for us. Who cares? I don't geez. care anymore. Oh, where it, people do. This is the music that has gotten us to 23rd place. No, 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 no. Yes, no, no. it is. You know what's For not, God's sake, no, it Carol. Isn't. If we played most of this music, we wouldn't be in 23rd oh, place. Oh, my God. God. You're, you're on crack. Carol. I'm not on crack. There's a lot of... Are you having a flashback? Did you do acid back in the 60s? No, I wish I did. Are you having a flashback? No. This is not the music that is going to get us into uh, first place. Well, look at you. Anthony S. Kreskin. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I predicted the uh, future there. You were being nice. Our show was in 23rd. The station was in 28th. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to the next clip. No, I got him in front of me. Okay. Now, uh, now this is this is us asking her to resign, because we knew they were firing all the jocks. Yeah. But they were taking their sweet old time, and we figured we'd try to, you know, speed the process al along so we could move on to the future of this radio station. And and we were upset because we were stuck in the quagmire. We were totally stuck. We weren't able to do what we want to do in the uh, in the way we wanted to do it, because. We were surrounded by this kind of stuff and the music we had to play, and it didn't fit our show, and, and we were being pulled down by it. It's funny, there are people up in Boston that are convinced that uh, we got fired on purpose because we had uh, this, yeah. this radio station lined up. Sheesh. <sighs> Sorry, they didn't have a clue. Here we go. Carol, take all these CDs. Look yeah, at them. Look I'm at them. looking I'll, at them. I'll get a U-Haul truck. Take every single one of these CDs, resign, take those CDs, and you can play them wherever you want. And we'll compete and see who, who ends up in the top ten first. Yes. Oh, yeah, but I'll tell you one thing. I'll make a deal with you. What? If I play my CDs for a month, and you yak for a month and play yours, I bet you go down to 25th. <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't care. So. Oh, no, no. I, I would like that bet. No, listen, seriously, guys, if I love you. Uh, if you resign, <laughs> take all the CDs, and uh, trust me, there's, you know, there's I, so I, many radio, there's so many radio stations in New York. Someone will pick you up. I tell you all something. You can take all these CDs and play them and see what happens. <laughs> I should trust you. Yeah, trust me. Why should now? Why shouldn't you trust me? Resign on the air right now. Carol Mill is gonna. Resign. <laughs> oh, kiss my ass, but you'd probably like it. Come on, resign. <laughs> no, on the no, air. no, 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 no. You resign on the air. <laughs> resign on the air. We gotta move forward here. Resign. Yeah, we are. Ta take all these CDs. I'll get the U-Haul truck and resign right now. No, I, I, I resign myself to hopefully remaining in my seat playing the best rock of the present, past, is it, future that I possibly can. Is it only a on coincidence? W -W -W, the Rock of New York. The only... <laughs> People that are enjoying this is Carol, Scottso, and Dave Herman. I don't think... I don't know that Dave and... Go to sleep, crazy lady. <laughs> she was convinced we were going to go down to 25th place in the yeah. yeah. Couldn't go any lower. Yeah, believe me. We were bottomed out. The only stations we were beating are the ones you hear in the cabs. It's so strange. You know, that, the cab yeah. guys are like, how did they find that station? Bang, in New York? Bang, 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 bang. We were how, beating those stations. How did she? How did she defend it? Like, yeah, you know, she wanted to keep doing the same exact thing that had the station in last place. Yeah, all of them did. All of them wanted to sit there, just like they had for many years, play the same music they had been playing, and the station be in last place it wasn't gonna all of a sudden people go oh oh that station's playing that music with those jobs oh let me tune in why did someone tell me oh it'd been that way for years eddie trunk oh sorry where's eddie 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 
Guys, you are giving me the worst flashback nightmare of my life right now. <laughs> some, some of the best stuff is coming up because Eddie uh, ran the board for uh, Carol Miller. These guys, they, these guys were so lazy and they were here for so long that they didn't even have to run their boards anymore or do anything. All they had to do is sit at a mic and, and someone like Eddie Trunk, who's a very talented guy, would point to them and then that would be their cue to start talking. Oh, yeah. And, you uh, know, and, and then someone like Eddie would do all the other work. If you've ever been in, inside a radio station, there's a lot to do. But the jocks, they were they had the hugest egos. They didn't have to do anything except get the cue from like a guy like Eddie so they could talk. You guys, I was getting I was trying to call yesterday too because I was just between reading about that book and what you guys are doing today, I mean, there's just so many flashbacks to what went on. I mean, you were talking about being caught in the middle of it. I was hired a couple months from before you guys. I came from doing morning drive at Q104 to taking over at a board op job, and needless to say, the wait, veteran DJs wait, that were there at the time... Wait, 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 I, I got I, just so I could appreciate this and chuckle a little harder. You went from doing morning radio, where you were the in man... New York City. To, ...to being the guy that cued the old jocks here at WWW so they could talk. Well, we, we talked about oh! some of the... We talked about some of the tactics from our former program director, and yeah, that now was he, one of them with me. He hired you, right? He hired me. Now, he must have uh, given you some great uh, promises about where you'd be at this station uh, as far as being on the air and doing stuff, uh, and that's why you came aboard, right? Right. I mean, I was working across <laughs> oh, the street. I'd been, in, I'd been in New York radio for about three years after being in Jersey for like 10, and I finally got, to, got over there, and I interviewed, and he said, look, you know, we're going to be making some changes. I want you on board. I want you in the building. As things change, we're going to slot you in. And, uh, you know, I sat there and pushed buttons for better than a year oh, God. at board hopping. Carol would point at him. Okay, uh, w w And then point, and, and he, uh, Eddie would push all the buttons. And Carol could sit. And then Eddie would point to Carol, meaning, hey, it's back to you introing a song or something. The funniest thing, though, is I don't know if you guys brought this up yesterday, but there are a couple great moments. I don't know if you brought up the point when we had that staff meeting when all the DJs were still there. And Gary stood in front of the table, and one of the first things he said to, to the entire old staff was, Beatles, Led Zeppelin, irrelevant. <laughs> Beatles, and Led the look irrelevant. on the faces was like... Beatles, Led Zeppelin, irrelevant. <laughs> irrelevant. <laughs> and you might not remember that, Ed, because you had a tendency to nod off in most of those meetings. Yeah. The best, the, the best in that same meeting, or one uh, right after that... He announced the whole staff that have been in these seats for 20 to 30 years that Ant and I were the future of the station. Yeah, so they oh, instantly so hated instantly us. Instantly just wanted us dead. That is like, thanks, Gary. Thank you. Thanks for announcing uh, that to everybody. And then I pitched for the Hard Rock show that I have now for like a year with him. On Friday and then, Saturday nights here in New York. Yeah, and then he finally let me do it. And then the first week I'm about to do it, the day before I do it, he hands me a playlist. And I'm like, what's this? And he said, well, that's what you're playing. I said, I didn't work you for a year to get my own show for you to tell me what I'm playing. Yeah, the whole thing with Eddie's show is that he does pick the music. It's one of the few shows in the country where he does pick the music and take requests from people and play uh, the music he wants to play. And that was the unique uh, edge about the show. And the first week is ready to go on, Gary Wall goes, hey, here's the list of songs you play. No, that, that's not what it's about. That wasn't that, what, what this is about. Then it's just another crappy program by him show that's on the air. That lasted about two weeks, and then I finally just started moving away from it, and it was basically the same thing. It's yep. like, we don't even know why we're printing this up because you're not following it. And I'm like, damn right. I'm... <laughs> there you go. Cool. And, then, and then he wanted, the show's called Saturday Night Rocks. I remember he wanted to call it the Saturday Night Rock Party. Ugh. Yeah, yeah. The party I, uh, tag at the end. Dude. And I just said to him, Gary, I'm playing Kasha Gugu, so let's lose party. If, if your party. show has party in the title, it's... kill yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I think Saturday Night Rock's Yin Yang Party if might be good. If you're doing like a Saturday night pajama party on the radio, kill yourself. Unless so that's how the name ended yourself. up coming up. I mean, I was not, I'm not even thrilled with the name that it is, but it just came to a compromise that I said, well, you know what? I'm not using the word party. This is not Duran Duran time over here. Hey, Eddie, what's the name of the Friday show? Did you ever name it? I, I don't know, man. I'm going to kick around a million names. I think just to keep it easy, it's just going to be Friday Night Rock. Friday Night Rock. <laughs> cool. Saturday you know, it's Night Rock. It's not creative, but what the hell. All right. Screw it. Hey, Eddie, we got to get back to the tapes, but thank hey, you. Hey, one quick thing, you guys. i got to tell you a story. I mean, you were talking about... It's never quick with you, Eddie. <laughs> remember, wait, you're going to love this, though. Remember you talking about faking uh, phone calls? Yeah, yeah. We were talking about how... Uh, and this is the guy's honest truth. During the day, let's call it between 6 a.m. and uh, 
7 to 8 o'clock at night. It goes even later than that. They don't play requests on the no. radio stations. It's mathematically impossible it's if impo you think about some, it. Some of the stations will do a noontime hour, and some of those are, are uh, requests, but even I could even explain that a little bit They're too. They're already on the playlist, right? Yeah. 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 It's but, amazing how many people don't know that, too, but I'll, I'll keep this really quick. When I, I did the last shift of Q104 when it was a hard rock station, right? Yeah. The last time it was ever a hard rock station, I did this last final shift. So I'm following the playlist like I had to, and the guys who were flipping it to what it is now, which is classic rock, came into me and they said, you're following the playlist? And I said, well, yeah, why wouldn't I? I mean, that's what you want me to do. It's the last shift, right? They said, no, 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 play what you want to play. So I start playing Slayer and Old Black Sabbath, and the <laughs> nice. phones go nuts. People calling up saying... My God, this is what I always wanted to hear on this station. This is the greatest thing ever. Uh oh, yeah, the time we've run out of time, uh, Eddie. Tell them well, what here's the punchline. Oh, okay. They were in the back during the whole time recording those comments from the listeners to play them back when they launched the new station playing Crosby, Stills and Nash into those songs. Oh, yeah, that's so a, that's a little radio trick. That's, right. that's up, true. It was just ridiculous. But uh, anyway, all right, thanks. Eddie. Thank you, and thanks for that autograph for my nephew, bro. Oh, uh, no problem. I man. got it. You rock. No problem. Mike Piazza autograph. Oh. I love PS Piazza in almost uh, all the time. Yeah, man. I, I was going to say, your nephew wanted Eddie Trunk's autograph? Nah, P Piazza and Eddie Trunk, very, uh, very close. Great I show. know. Great well, show. uh, Anthony, um... Eddie Trunk uh, wasted our time in this segment, so oh, now we got to take a break. No, no. <laughs> Eddie, always nice. Stop always a fine it. Treat. Well, we have more of the the fight tapes to, to play. I know. Well, we're never getting to these. We played. I can't believe we it. We played four this time. Oh, we two. only played two. How about two more. All right. Well, let's play two quick ones, and then we'll we'll finish <laughs> we'll finish up uh, the clips after the break. I swear. We're See, tomorrow. Kevin from Philly checking in. Now, this is a guy from Philly. Does Rocco's show have party at the end of it? <laughs> See? You can all hate Rocco, no matter where you're from. All right, here... Uh, <laughs> party. Yeah, party. Here we are, uh, just riding Carol and begging her to resign. <laughs> She's not going to resign. Take, no, I'm not going to resign. You can have all these CDs and resign. No, you can have these You'd microphones have the, and resign. You would oh. have the best CD collection in the history of yo, uh, yo, yo, wait, wait, wait. mankind. You know, actually, um, we do here at WNEW, and that's why we're playing it for you. Oh, oh. oh my God. The, this, oh, the Everyone company is, this line. Is my, this is my music, man. Don't mess with my music. Uh. I re you know what, though? I, re I respect her for that. There you go. She believed in that, and then and, and she was going to go down fighting. I like people that go down fighting. Yeah, Hitler believed in what he was doing, too. <laughs> she stinks. No, you know what I didn't like? I didn't like that um, she was... I, it sounded to me like trying to keep the job thing and... Yeah. You know, oh, that's what we play here at WWW. That's the great music. She was doing the company line. Yeah, it was just but like But she didn't realize uh, that the company could care less about right. the, the old jocks and the old music. Right. All right, uh, we'll play the analogy, and then we'll take a break and play the rest of this. So right. here's the analogy. Oh, stick around. The Stray Cat, Stray Cat, Cat Strut is on the way. Can't wait to hear that again. I, I think I've only heard it 8,000 times so far. How many times have you worn the, those jeans? What jeans? I don't know what jeans are. Whatever they are there. What does that have to do with the price of tomatoes? I'll tell you what. Because your favorite music is kind of like your favorite clothes. Stuff oh. that's the I'm not wearing bell bottoms anymore. I don't need to. I've moved on with my... You want to do that analogy? Lifestyle. Sometimes your underwear gets skid marks that you got to throw away. Well, I'll tell you something. About <laughs> if you want to talk about laundry. Bell bottoms. Bell bottoms are in this... Year. Oh, I'm turning your mic off. <laughs> we got to get... We got to move on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we're just getting warmed up. We'll definitely play the rest of this after the break, okay? All right? Yeah. Old Dirty in the house. Yo, kid! What's the deal? We'll talk to you next as well. <laughs> Nothing you've imagined has prepared you for this. Hey, oh, come in here, I'm gay. I just barked mouth. He said sit on it, so I did. Oh, seven, huh? Back to the tapes, Anthony. Back to the yes, tapes. Yes, right away. The Carol Miller tapes from when we first got here to NEW. She was one of the uh, holdover jocks from the classic rock, classic jock days. And uh, she came on after us, so we'd butt heads during the crossover and uh, get into these little arguments about who was going to be successful, who wasn't. Old Dirty, you remember those days? Yo, Nightbird. That was her no. thing on the radio, right? Oh, that Night was the Nightbird Allison died, Steel. yo. <laughs> What's up with that? You're mixing yo, them up. Were, those were the dark days here, right? That's like confusing Biz Markie with uh, Biggie Smalls. 
What are you Yo, doing? Chill, Yo, chill with the metal detector, my <laughs> Trying to give it into a way he can understand. Excellent. Is what he, happened, man? He's pissed off because we used a metal detector hey, on him. Yo, ben. He's the first guy we used a metal detector on. <laughs> That's an honor, my brother. He's in charge Whee! of security. Did he yeah. beep, Ben? Anything beep pissed. on him? Did he beep? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Did he, uh, <laughs> did he ever beep? <laughs> Well, did we check to see what it was? Uh, yeah, you know, nothing. Yeah, don't worry about it. It's, not, it's, it's nothing of an explosive nature. <laughs> well, thank God. <laughs> he, he beeped all over the place? No, he didn't beep as bad. It, all over his pocket area. Just, just yeah. Was, yeah. Well, some that's change. Like <laughs> Maybe <laughs> nail clipper. Yeah, that, yeah that's what it is. Sure. Yeah, nice yeah okay. Little, little, you know. All right, so let's get back to the table. Yeah. Where, where, where are we on this? Um, Enemas. Oh, Enemas, sure. We were going back and forth pretty good, and she went uh, down to the streets of New York and came back with some fleet enemas for us. Yeah, for some reason she thought it would be funny. I didn't get the joke that she brought <laughs> enemas back, but whatever. A little tomfoolery. <laughs> okay. Carol Miller walked back in the studio and she gave us uh, a couple of enemas. Handed us enemas. I don't get it, Carol. Hello. Hello. I don't get it. What does this mean? What does this mean? What, what does this mean? I don't know. She she had to run out to the... What does this mean? <laughs> what is wrong with you? No, no, dear. You see, Are I... Are you having I, an acid flashback? What is a, a, an well, enema supposed acid to... acid was in there, but it, that was for you, dear. What does this mean? What does it mean? <laughs> well, actually, you see, I, you know, I left, and I, I, I was on my conscience. I didn't want to, you know, fight with you guys. I love you guys, and I thought... What does an enema mean? Shove it up your ass. <laughs> oh, wow. So I thought perhaps there might be something, you know, All right. that cons constructive you could so do. So, Carol, what? Once you we had enough. I won. No, Bye. No, no, you didn't win. Yeah, I won. No, no, tr trust me, you did not win. Oh, trust, trust me. me. <laughs> trust me, you did not win. Um, I, okay. got, I got my conscience. I speak my mind. You don't. <laughs> wow. One of many, my brother. <laughs> I win. <laughs> All right, and now she brings up ratings, and we had absolutely yeah, none. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we had zero. So. Yo, you had a little rinky-dink closet for an office, remember? <laughs> yeah, we oh, had the closet for the office. At, at like, this point, we've taken all, all over half the floor. You know what I'm saying? Now you're big dogs on your way to Hollywood. Remember they gave us a tiny yeah. little closet? Yeah. Do you remember the fight? Which one was this? Well, I was I, here for that. I barely I was probably inebriated. I, I barely knew. <laughs> I barely knew OD. Yeah. And remember, we were going at it with uh, the general manager, and the program director, yeah. in that in that class uh, office over there. <laughs> and you're outside, like, damn, yeah, what is yeah, going yeah, on? Yeah. Loki's yelling at Gary Wall, right to his face, going, "What do you do? <laughs> Tell me, what do you do here? <laughs> what is it you do?" That was the ice cream incident. Yeah. Yeah. That's oh. for another day, but yeah, I was I was losing it on him, trying to figure out what he did, because what's he, your job he here? Would leave what do you come in and do every day? He would leave for three to three and a half hour lunches, and all hell was breaking loose around the station. <laughs> he had no clue, so I finally had it. I was I was nose to nose with this guy, and I could I could see it in his eyes that he wanted to hit me so bad. But the yeah. general manager was right there, trying to calm us all down. Mm -hmm. Dude, those were the days, kid. Let me tell you. All right, here, hit the next uh, clip about ratings. This this one definitely hurt at the time. <laughs> you guys have been trying to make this a kick-ass rock hey, station I, for I 10, 15 years. Listen, no, 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 no. How no, many no. years have you been here? I've been here 15. Uh, have you guys ever been out of 20th place? Absolutely. How long ago? Mm. Can you remember the back that far? Yeah, I'll tell you, when we, we really had our best ratings, um, I would say, I, I actually, I have the, the ratings at home about 1985 or so. Oof, we, did, we did very well. 13 years ago. Yeah. No, but we that's actually... Great. Um, we that, had that's some great. That's fantastic. Very, okay, I, great. You're, you're asking me when we had our best ratings, that, that would be it. 1985. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, that's great. Yeah, okay. So for the last 13 years, you guys have been trying to get back no, there and nothing's actually, happened. No, no, that's not really what, what happened. Oh, man. Why would you admit that you were good back in 85? Yeah. No, it was great in 85. 85. I have the ratings at home. All right. Uh, I guess that wasn't the one where she was talking about our ratings. Mm. Here's us asking her to resign again. Carol, the offer is, is here. Resign on the air right now. It'll, it'll, listen. You'll, you'll be the talk of New York again. Well, at least uh, someone will be talking. They ain't talking about you. <laughs> you want to make a bet? That's how out of touch you are, Oh, Karen. come on. You I don't even know. Touch. Listen, I will get the U-Haul. Uh, you uh, can uh, take <laughs> all those CDs. I'm serious. This isn't a joke anymore. You can take all the CDs, and oh, you can, all the old jocks from here could go find another radio station. Notice all the ones that have been fired from here. No one's picking them up because no one cares. You guys are all out of touch. No one Listen, cares let, let anymore. Let me tell you something. Take the CDs and find another radio Hang station. On, Simple me, as that. No, no, no one cares. Shut up for a second. 
I want to say something. We are not. You you are employed here to do bits and to to do no, things I'm like that. I cannot. I I cannot come in and level you the way maybe it would be fun to do. It's just not my gig. I can't do it. So I will not do, do much it. Much of anything. Mm -mm. No, I can't do much of anything. But I got a career in radio. I don't know what you got. I have a career in radio. I've been doing this for 18 for, years. You've been here for three months? 18 years. Oh, oh, that's that's how they, they, they rate people around here. How long have you, <laughs> you been at NEW? Yeah. But let's hold it up, you know? I mean, cut it. So. Cut it, there man, you, go. you know? No, seriously, take Would the CDs. stop being serious about this? I'm very serious about this. Well, this place problem. sucks and it's time to move forward. Well, that's your problem. You're being serious about this. You're getting all bit out of shape. We're celebrating We're a relic. We're doing okay. a celebration for a relic. <laughs> <laughs> it's... You, Oh my God. That is uncomfortable to listen Oh, isn't that just... Uh, I used to be uh, and not say a damn thing. Hey, man, that's, that's <laughs> close to yeah, three years ago, and yeah. all the jocks that got fired from here, where are they? Ah. Opie, you are vicious, man. What? What did I say? Oh. Yeah, I don't do anything. I don't much of anything. Nobody cares. I don't much of anything. And you knew that nobody really did. Nobody yeah. cares. Oh. Oh. This is the end of the first confrontation. Uh, this is oh. the end of the first confrontation. Okay, go ahead. It was great. It was great back then. I it's came to done. You guys Let's present. move on. Bye. Bye. Uh, bye. Go. Go bye. away. Bye bye. No, seriously, bye. 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 All right. Okay. Look at this. Our big boss is in. He doesn't like it. Rick, take her headphones off. Bye. No, no, no. I take them off myself. Bye. Don't lay a finger on me. Don't. Just leave. It's our show. We don't want you on anymore. I'm turning your mic off. Bye. You oh, made your point. You're powerful. Turn it off, baby. Bye. Wow. Bye. Bye. <laughs> leave. It's our show. Leave. All right, fine. We'll just sit here. <laughs> you can't just sit here. I'll sit here. <laughs> What's up next, though? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we sat uncomfortably with the boss in the studio for a few minutes, Norton. Because she wouldn't leave, so I'm like, all right, fine. Just uncomfortable silence. Do you know how badly you have to be shredded on the air to sit there and refuse to leave? Yeah. It's almost like you know you've been pounded and you're just hoping a moment comes where you can fight back. <laughs> that was awful. So uh, the big boss got her out and then she returned. Again? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. That and, and rang. That's right. And we had a 2-2 in the afternoon, made it into the newspapers. You didn't. You guys didn't Carol, even get the top Carol, 20. Carol, don't even sit there and think what you do on the radio is actually getting ratings. That's ridiculous. No, I'm a support That's player. That's ridiculous. Uh, I'm Ridic a support you guys start this over. You, you jumped in the middle of this for some reason. Go no, all the way to the beginning. I know. Go all the way to the beginning. We were talking about ratings, and, and she was bragging that when she was doing uh, this show that we're doing now, that yeah. at one time she got a 2.2, .2 and, and all, all the papers wrote about it. The papers wrote about it, too, too. All right. It kind of hurt, because at the time, we I think oh the show God. was like at 1.4, maybe. Is Awful. it 2.2 two too good, though? No. No. 2.2 two two stinks. <laughs> Just put it... Yeah. No, it, seriously. Right now, the show is around a five, just to give you an nice. idea. When we took it over, it was a 1.4. And she was bragging that one time it was at a 2.2. <laughs> okay, that's what she was talking about when we jump in the middle of this uh, segment. Go. That's oh, right. That and, and, and rang. That's right. And we had a 2-2 two -two in the afternoon, made it into the newspapers. You, didn't, you guys didn't Carol, even get the top Carol, 20. Carol, don't even sit there and think what you do on the radio is actually getting ratings. That's ridiculous. No, I'm a support that's player. That's ridiculous. I, I'm ridiculous. a support player. You, you don't what, support you do, us you know and we you... don't support you. Simple let me as that. Tell you, let me stay out of our face and we'll stay out of yours. Then get out of my studio. You're off now. No. No, we're off when we're done. We're off when we're done. We've oh, been told that. Yeah, but you just ran your commercials, you see, after the hour, which is frankly illegal. It doesn't Stay out matter. of our face and we'll stay out of yours. And I'm stop not... talking behind our backs to every single person that works here because they come right to us and tell us what you're saying. <laughs> and you know what's you're really funny? You're a little crybaby. You know you're everything I hate about radio. So and you sit, know something? Sit down and, 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 uh, and let Ed point to you so you yeah, can right. go, w n e w w w com You see, dumb and dumber. No one tunes you in. No one tunes dumb you in to hear you. Hey, let me to, tell you something. To hear you intro records. Well, sir, but nobody tunes you're high. you. Nobody tunes you're absolutely you in. Period. High if you, no, people I don't. People are tuning us in, Carol. I don't Trust think, me. No, I don't Trust think me. people tune me Trust in to me. hear records. Oh. Trust me, they are tuning us in. Yeah, maybe in Siberia if they've got a satellite. Oh, oh yeah, that that hurts. Listen, that I'm hurts. only here as a support that, player, and I. <laughs> Siberia. Oh, uh, that was, it started really getting ugly there. These are just er excerpts. These fights went on for like 20 straight minutes. On yeah, the they would just go on and on. Someday maybe we'll play the whole thing. <laughs> she, she would just... Oh. Just the way you, you kept hammering her impediment. <laughs> oh, no, we also started doing... Uh, we, just, we just kept doing our radio show until we felt like leaving. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was another thing. drive her and the rest of the staff nuts. Were you allowed to do that? 
Uh, yeah, well, yeah, not really, gave... but we weren't syndicated at the time, so we, you know... <laughs> they sort of gave us, gave the okay, I think. Yeah. You know. So if we wanted to really F with her, sure, we would stay on. <laughs> Why not? We'd stay on an extra hour doing absolutely nothing. <laughs> Why is Opie's voice so high? I guess it's not just the old Boston tapes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, which one is this? Where are we? This is uh, when you start hammering on what does she do. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, hit this one. What do you do, Carol? What do you do? What do I you, do? You can't even run the stupid board. I can run the board. I elect not to. Then why don't you do it? Why do you have to uh, uh, allow Eddie to sit here and push your buttons? He points at you and you go, oh, W N E W. Uh, hey, let me tell you something. Are coming to the Beacon no, Theater. No, I choose uh, not to run. Hey, listen, what do you I do, choose Carol? not to run the board you, because you I enjoy it. You want to challenge me and you say I'm not a comedian and I don't do bits and I don't You're do serious. a show? You know what? What do you do? What do you do? No, no, no. Tell me what you do. I'm tell not me a what comedian. You, tell me, tell me what you uh, what, bring to my, the audience. What is my role here? Yeah, what is your role? I'd like to know that. Well, if you shut up for a minute, I'll tell you. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. I've been people's friend for quite a long time. We all grew up together. <laughs> friend. That's, w what, that's my w role. W N E W. Uh, I, that's, uh, that pros. is my role. Uh, that You're, is my role. <laughs> yeah, that was the line. No one has had. nothing to say. Just, just what a child. He keeps going W N E W. W N E W. You're like a, you're the annoying kid in school that would just keep poking somebody. Oh, I'll quit it. I'll quit it. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, that's um. That was what she would say, too. She would say that she was people's friend. They would tune in, not just to hear her music, but it would be like listening to a friend. There you go. Hey. <laughs> I have never tuned in to listen to a friend play a music. Friend. Ever. Uh, what's the challenge? I don't remember this one. Okay, here we go. Uh, showing up and see how many people... Oh, yeah, yeah, the challenge. Okay. And I'll tell you what, you know something? You're such a wuss that you wouldn't like a challenge. I challenge you, okay? Challenge me to what, Carol? Whatever. What? We go on stage together. You, you tell me who more people would say hello to and think thank for being Carol, a friend. Carol, you races. had 50 years in this town. We've had 50, seven months. You, you, I don't even know how long. I know, I was, I know it was like four when I started listening yeah, right. to you. Yeah, so. you, you, you right. You guys and right. I are about, years. Five, you guys are about five years younger than me. 30 years. So what are you talking about? 30 years. About? Hey, just Sorry, because you have... You've had 30 years. Well, you know why? Just because I started when I was a teenager and I happened to do well enough, yeah. you finally get to New York when you're friggin' 37. Yeah. Yeah, that... that Aren't you 37? That hurts. No, I'm not 37, Well, girl. Well, your pal I'm, is. I'm 35. Oh, good for you. You're, you, why don't you... Are you toilet <laughs> trained yet? Uh, yeah, I'm toilet trained. Yeah, well, I've been this doing... Good. Good. See, if you it did this good. type of radio, maybe uh, people would sit around and listen to you, Oh, too, I'm not... Instead of, I, uh, w N A W do. Oh, you want to know what I do with you every day? Another qualifier coming this hour, uh, Ted Nugent Strangle. Hey, listen, that's a very bad English, caller, that's a bad English, 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 English accent you're doing, bud, and I'm not from England. Whatever, I'm from New Carol. York, and you're not. Whatever. You're from you're Whatever. from Iceland. Just stay out of her face. <laughs> Whatever. God. Whatever. Yeah, that got so ugly. Uh, <laughs> I'm from New York. You're from Iceland. I'm not from Iceland. <laughs> I'm from Iceland. I don't know. Oh, my God. And this is, uh, I guess, this is our, the last clip we have. Just a grown man going, whatever, whatever, you whatever. See, they just progressively got worse and worse. Very funny. We have hundreds of these. We, we just picked out a few. All right. Well, here's the last one for today, anyway. Huh? This is uh, when you shut off the mic and she starts cursing. Oh, sh okay. Why? What? Yeah. Nothing. What? Oh, wait, wait, wait. It's so funny. Uh, wait, wait, okay. Oh, my. I took it right down to third grade level. You are the worst, man. You are the worst. She's trying to talk, and I'm like, what? 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 I can't hear you. What? You're a child. Why? What? Yeah. Nothing. What? It's so funny. Better call the engineer. I think something's wrong with the mic. Yeah, but it's because... Rock in New York, 1027, WNEW, the living legend is next. Can't wait to hear uh, what comes out of her mouth tonight. Yeah. <laughs> you useless pieces of oh. Now get out of here. Oh, my God. You're a loser. <laughs> Actually, you aren't. He, no, he no, is. I'm just You're a loser. No, no. Just as useless. No. Uh -oh. Jeez. Oh, my Jesus. Oh my God. Well, can I take a moment? Doors being slammed. Well, I, we signed off, and then she starts cursing, losing her freaking mind. The tape is still rolling, and we're slamming the doors. You're useless pieces of ass. I, I, I want to disagree again? with her, though, that Anthony... Wait, wait, man. Uh, <laughs> Here's agreeing that I, too, am a piece of ass, yeah. I want to hear this again, because this is how we went off the air. We, we said what we had to say, and then she's cursing us out, and then uh, we're slamming the doors as she's trying to, like, you know, bitch she's us following. out. She was trying to oh, she was following us? Yeah, yeah, she... Why? What? Yeah. What? <laughs>
<laughs> it's so funny. Better call the engineer. I think something's wrong with the mic. Yeah, but it's because Rock in so New York, 1027 WNEW. The living legend is next. Can't wait to hear uh, what comes out of her mouth tonight. Yeah. <laughs> you useless pieces of <laughs> Now get out of here. Oh, my God. You're a loser. <laughs> pieces of Actually, you are. He, no, he no, is. I'm just You're a loser. loser. No, I'm no. just as useless now. And there's no. a slam in the door, and then she's she's chasing after us, and then she did she tried to do something that people have been trying to do for years, and the divide and conquer. Yeah, that's always a, a good one. God bless. I man. like you. I don't like yeah, you. Yeah, because she turns and goes, I like you, and I don't like him, and it's like, no, I'm just uh, I'm 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 just as useless as he is. <laughs> Anthony's a less obvious douche. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not the one going, what, what, <laughs> what? All right, Carol Miller next. I can't wait to hear what comes out of him. The living legend. <laughs> you are horrible. That was, that was like a knife and something. You're sitting on the toilet and rips it up. That's I got to tell you, like. we had huge balls because we had no ratings. No one liked. It was no one liked us. The best part would be she would get on the air after all this would happen. And go, okay, and now back to what really matters, the music. We're going to get the let out now. And go, like she would be like, all right, now that that distraction's over with, back to what really counts, the music here at WWE. I'll tell you, I'll tell you one thing that needs to be said, because uh, that's some brutal stuff. We, we really don't have any problems with her anymore. We, no, it was really just, worked out. Our, it was what not. was going on at the time. We talked after that. And, uh, well, it, it was months after that, and I don't, I don't have any problems with her. Nah. And I, I, and I have to say it again, even well, though I, Norton's making jokes, I mean, I respect someone that believes yeah. in something and, and will fight for it, whether it's right or wrong. You got to respect that. Yeah, no, that was important during the American Revolution. Because right? <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the jocks felt the same way, but none of them would, uh, you know, would yeah, they, they were the ones that just us. left the um, faxes and, uh, and left the notes pinned to the walls. And she has a gig now, right? She's on the air somewhere. Uh, she's doing she's some stuff, I think, sure. I think she's trying out on K-Rock, cool. our sister station in New York. It's a good move. Wax in the ears over there. <laughs> you are terrible. <laughs> you are such a... Jesus I Christ. said it's a good move, man. Yeah, but the sarcasm what? wasn't seeping through. It was coming through I like said, a flood. Look, I said it's a good move. <laughs> you go, hey, you know, sister station, K-Rock. doing like, trying out for an overnight. It's a good move. <laughs> you might as well just go... It's a good move. Yeah, great move. The living legend. <laughs> it's a good move, man. Good job, Steve Queenston, doing a great job over there. <laughs> Steve Queenston. I hope uh, the gang at AF uh, listen to the, uh, this whole segment today. Oh, yeah? You are going to lose, so you might as well, you know, go out fighting. We always win in the end. Yeah. For some stupid reason. It doesn't matter what uh, city it is. What's going on? We always wind up winning in the end. Instead of keeping your mouth shut because Dave Dickless and the GM, who got upset at our commentary yeah. yesterday, Ouch. told you not to uh, say anything about us, you know. Yeah. Go out fighting. I'll respect that. We'll hire you at one of our other stations. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> say something. Schlacho. Hey, what's going on? But instead, we're walking all over you, and you have nothing to say. That's pathetic. Yeah. You know where you... we could send Carol up there to teach you how to do it. Yeah, there you go. Hey, what's up? What's up, Norton? I just wanted to say, man, it's really weird. You guys are uh, hugely popular in West Orange, New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> you whore! Awful! <laughs> Why would you say West Orange, New Jersey? Coming from the side of the building. Oh, my God, it looks like something flew into the building. Yeah, it sounds low, and then, boom, I mean, it was like a bomb. It, uh, this is horrible. This is this is a disaster. Jeez, oh, I don't, I, you know, I, I, I'm looking at the, you know, maybe, I, I hope because of the time, maybe the, there aren't that many people there, but, you know, that, God sakes, that's a busy thing. Oh, man, this is terrible. I can't believe I'm looking at this. You know, it's like you're looking at a the movie or something, but I'm looking at it live. It's right, right, it's right in front of me because that's where I live. I'm, I'm looking out my bedroom window. Oh man, the smoke is just coming out of the top. Yeah, you can see it. It's a, it's, a, it's a huge. The whole. Oh man, and the, you know, the sky, the whole top of the building is engulfed in smoke. Oh, this is. And then there's uh, there's smoke pouring out of the side of the building, in which uh, it, it, obviously something has flown into the side. Do we have any other? 
Do we have any other information marked from anybody? Not yet. We're waiting. Warner's got actually the breaking news here. Yeah, I think it was the plane. I heard it. I heard the plane. I heard. I heard. I said. I said. My wife was was, was close. I, and that that sounds awful low. And then boom. I mean, you know, when an explosion rocks your building, I'd say what we're about uh, seven blocks away. No. And I'm looking right at it. Oh man. That the hole looks like it. It covers a few floors. Yeah, yeah, and, the, and I mean the, the the width. You're talking about the whole side. Yeah. Oh man. Well, it, 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 the the hole nearly covers the entire side. Yeah. Encompasses the entire side of the World Trade Center. It's, Which building is it? Is it the one with it, the observation deck or the other one? It's the taller one, the one on the right. Right. Uh, of course, depending if you're looking right to left, but it's mm. the one that has the uh, huge tower on top. I think that's the TV towers. Right. And there, gosh, you see people uh, on the rooftops looking. And, you know, downtown Tribeca, you can, oh, this is, God sakes, this is terrible. This yeah, that really is an aura. That's an awful sight just to uh, look at it. Oh, man. Early report here that it was some sort of, uh, that it was a twin engine plane <clears throat> that flew right into the Trade Center, but no word on if it was a commercial or private or, or what. God. Oh. Hmm. I, I don't think I've, I've never seen anything like this. Uh, can we pick up whatever live thing they have on MSNBC? Oh. Well, they're not. All we have are this. But now there's there's smoke pouring out of one where apparently the hole went into the yeah. side of the building, but then it, it, it looks as though there's fire now. Yeah, yeah. I don't see any flames, but there's such an enormous amount of smoke that obviously there's fire. It's the it's the side facing north. If you were if you were coming uptown, mm -hmm. right. it's, that's the north side. Uh, I, God sakes! I say the only thing positive about it is that that, that if you were under it, if people in the building. Of course, I, I don't think you can use any elevators or anything like that, but I guess they can walk down. But anything from from that explosion and up, you can't you you can't get out. No. God. We got a feed here. Let's see what um, we can hear. Couldn't tell much more from 14th Street. Now we had an earlier eyewitness that told us he thought it appeared to be a 737. Your what you saw was a small, perhaps twin-engine airplane. No, not a twin-engine. It was a jet. Um, of medium to smallish proportions. Not a big airliner, though. Okay. Um, okay, so it appeared to be a... And, and what... what pro, You heard this sound. I'm just trying to understand what happened. You heard a sound. That's what compelled you to look up into the sky. Yeah, you, could hear, you could hear a jet coming overhead, and it sounded low, so many of us looked up to see what was... You know, because it sounded so close. We all looked up. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it didn't look like it was swerving or out of control. It was going steadily lower. Uh, it was you know, definitely going steadily lower, but it wasn't dropping uh, like nose first or anything that would make you think that the plane was in trouble. Right. Which uh, then, of course, raises the question exactly what was that airplane doing and, and how did this occur? Right. Uh, but the airplane, I... the airplane did not appear in, to be in trouble to you. I don't know. I don't know enough about airplanes to know what it should look like. But it wasn't nose down, or it wasn't swerving up and down, or left and right. It was making a straight, steady decline towards the, the World Trade Center. Uh, Mary, I'm hearing what, a so what sounds to be an awful lot of people that are either crying or uh, sobbing or something in the background. That, that's my baby wondering why I'm still standing here. But there are a lot of us who are shaking or in. There's a special excitement God. about being a part of history. Reggie Jackson hit his third home run of the game. A new hitter for Dave McGee. Swung on a two deep to right. There it goes. That ball is gone. Chicago White Sox in three big games chock full of promotional giveaways. The series begins on Tuesday, September 11th at 7.05. The following night, also a 7.05 start, is Cole's Yankees business card holder night for the first 25,000 fans 21 and over. The series concludes at 7.05 on Thursday, September 13th. That night, the first 25,000 fans 21 and over receive a Yankees travel mug courtesy of Chock Full of Nuts. For tickets, visit the Yankee Stadium ticket window, Yankees Clubhouse Shops, or call Ticketmaster at 212-307-1212. That's 212-307-1212.
this is Ben Benson. I have always been an aficionado of the classic New York Steakhouse. It was terrific when I got the opportunity to do one myself. What we do is buy the finest food and prepare it very, very simply. And that's been my motto, buy the best. Prepare it simply and your customers will appreciate it. It's funny, people will say to me, how come your cream spinach is so great? Because the classic steakhouse meal is the sirloin steak, the hash browns, and the cream spinach. I'm a little bit nutty about making sure that the consistency is there. And that's something you will only get in a restaurant that has an owner on premises. We have gotten some intensely favorable critical praise. My favorite one of all appeared in Gourmet Magazine. After raving about our superb cuts of meat, they referred to Ben Benson's as a true treasure in New York. Ben Benson Steakhouse, 123 West 52nd Street, 212-581-8888. And when you're in, come over and say hello to me. Listen, that's what you sound like. Dr. Gene Wagner talks about nighttime teeth grinding. Aside from being a turnoff for the person you sleep with, it can cause tooth loosening, even tooth loss. That's why I created a dental protector to cushion your teeth. It's called the doctor's night guard. Because you fit it yourself, you'll save money. More importantly, you'll protect your teeth. It might even help your sex life. The doctor's night guard. Relieve the nightly grind. day has ended. Amber skies blend to twilight blue. The world softens a bit around the edges, and you release all the cares of the day. Now is the time for Bella Sera wine. Bella Sera Pinot Grigio from Italy. Pour a glass, relax. It's going to be a beautiful evening. Or as they say in Italian, it's going to be a Bella Sera. Imported by Bella de Bella Sera, Healdsburg, California. A strike! Yes! Hey, the Ovaltine man! Yeah! No kid can resist the taste of rich chocolate Ovaltine. This is so good and chocolatey. This is great chocolate milk. Is it Nesquik? Get real. It's rich chocolate Ovaltine. Kids love Ovaltine's rich chocolate taste. And Ovaltine adds vitamins and minerals that Nesquik powder doesn't. So why give them Nesquik when you can give them more? And there are more vitamins and minerals in Ovaltine. Ovaltine rocks! Ovaltine, please! I'm a... This is a health care update from Hackensack University Medical Center. There's currently a blood shortage here in the metropolitan area. My guest is Kathleen Riley, Administrative Director of Pathology at Hackensack University Medical Center. Kathy, what can people in the audience do to help? They can roll up their sleeves and donate, either at Hackensack University Medical Center's blood donor service or at their local blood bank. A lot of people are afraid of donating blood. They fear danger or pain. There's only a little pinch in the arm, and the entire system that we use for collecting the blood is sterile and single-use. If you want more information about donating blood, call your local blood bank, your local hospital, and if you're interested in doing it at Hackensack University Medical Center, you can call 201-996-4818. That's 996-4818. Do the right thing. Give the gift of life. Give blood. This has been a healthcare update from Hackensack University Medical Center. We're with you for life. WFAN New York. CBS Tonight. Feel the rhythm. Experience the passion and the heat. The Latin Grammy Awards Live. It's the Grammys with a twist. CBS Tonight. Tourno, the world's largest watch store since 1900, poses the question, what does your watch say about you? As the Spitfire claws for altitude, the pilot checks my watch face. I am the Mark 15 Spitfire watch from Tourneau of the IWC's pilot line commemorating the Royal Air Force's most famous battle plane. In the 1940s, IWC was the official supplier to the Royal Air Force. Designed and manufactured by hand in Switzerland, professional pilots put their trust in IWC. It's time for a barrel roll. The pilot eases nose down for a little extra speed. I picture a 109 closing on our tail. IWC, since 1868 and for as long as there are men, I am the Mark 15 Spitfire Watch, and I say a lot about you. See what a new watch can say about you at Tourno, the world's largest watch store since 1900, with over 100 brands and 8,000 styles in all price ranges. Tourno, Madison at 52nd, 7th Avenue and 34th Street, the World Trade Center, Roosevelt Field, Long Island, and the Tourno Time Machine, 57th Street of Madison. Well, the other, the other tower... Uh, the other tower just blew up. I mean, a, a, a huge hole just blew up in the other tower, the tower that the plane flew in. There's a, there's a huge hole in that. And then the other World Trade Center tower blew up.
there, there is another huge area damaged by an explosion on the other tower, not the tower that the aircraft hit, that also appears to range over maybe 15 to 20 stories at the least, some sort of secondary explosion in the other tower has just occurred. Are we getting any live feed? What kind of live feed are we getting from Channel 4? Is there anything, is there anything you can pick up from anybody? So look at that, Charles. Look. Well, you can see it blown. Yeah. They're showing a replay of it blown up. Of the second of the secondary explosion in the in the other tower. Uh, it's absolutely. If you just turned your radio or television on, uh, the uh, the uh, a plane has flown into the side of the World Trade Center. It looks. People starting to say it could be a terrorist attack. Well, you would suspect maybe if, with a secondary explosion in the other tower that was not involved in the initial incident, which is what has been described as some sort of twin engine plane flying into the uh, north side of Tower 1 of the World Trade Center. And now the other tower blown up. And now the other tower, a, a massive, massive explosion. We got Warner back. Uh, Warner? Yeah, I'm in. The, the, the tower on the left that just got it, I, I didn't hear any airplane. I, and there's no big hole. I don't think that was a plane. Well, just but, but there was a huge plume of of, 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 of fire. Yeah, I'm looking at it, yeah. covered nearly 15 or 20 stories. So that appears to be, that both towers appear to be on fire. Both towers are on fire. The one on the right that was hit first was a plane. I mean, you could hear the plane go over and boom. And the one on the left, which just happened minutes ago, the two holes, I don't think it was a plane. I'm a, my God, I hate to say it. I, I hate, you know, if I had a guess, I would say it was a bomb. I mean, it just, they just exploded. Yeah, it, the two holes. It looked on. And how big is the hole on the one on the left? Uh, as the, the, the smoke is, oh, man, it's, now you can see it's going to be like half, half the cover of the building, half the, half the front. I'm looking south, so the north side of the buildings are facing me. I'd say it covers half, half of the left tower. The one on the right is almost the whole, the whole, entire tower on the right, the hole, the All width right. of the hole. Well, right now, the Associated Press is saying, although you say you did not see a second uh, airplane, right. th th this is, there is word that a second plane has crashed into the World Trade Center. Yes, one of the, one of the networks picked that up before yeah. the video. Yes. Two, both towers, as you mentioned, are in flames, smoke building, second and as many as six deaths reported right now. Oh, man. I never heard the second plane. Uh, if, if, in fact, there was one. Oh, oh God. This, this is, oh, you can see the, the debris falling Oh, this is terrible. Oh, there's another. Oh, no, no, I just saw the plane just fly into it, so it did, and purposely flew into it. Did Did you see that? Yeah. Because I was... Oh, man. Well, it, must have, it wasn't a jet. It was probably just a, oh, God, a prop. Oh, so clearly a, clearly a, ter a, a, a terrorist attack, you it, would assume. Well, you would assume yeah, at this we, point. You would assume a terrorist attack. You have to assume it. Oh, man. Two airplanes have flown into the World Trade Center in New York City, striking either, each tower. Hmm. Well, that's others. My God. What are they saying on MSNBC? Can we pick that audio? Seriously, U.S. government facilities worldwide remain at a heightened state of alert. Now, you'll remember that when the World Trade Center explosion happened back in 1993, uh, this was linked to uh, Osama bin Laden's terrorist network. The World Trade Center has uh, seven high-rise buildings, a shopping mall, several levels of underground parking, and if this was a terrorist attack, it was timed at a, a, at a moment on the East Coast shortly before 9 o'clock where there would have been a great many people inside these two buildings. There you see the second attack, the plane coming in, exploding in the second tower. There would have been a great many people inside these two towers uh, who no doubt lost their lives. Not to mention the debris raining down on people below a very busy area the southern part of Manhattan during rush hour. We do not have uh, any uh, reports of uh, injuries or deaths, but surely that will be coming to us very shortly. Lester? Lester? 
All right, what I want to do is take a look at that airplane in slow motion. It, it looks like a jet aircraft. There it is, frozen. Clearly a low-wing airplane. Looks to be a swept wing, which indicates a jet. And it looks like a sizable jet, perhaps an airliner or a commuter jet. Can we roll it just a little bit here? Okay, freeze it right there if you can. And clearly, clearly that is a, a swept wing jet, which means a, a passenger sized jet of some kind, which leads to all kinds of questions. Now, airplanes, airliners are on radar. They have transponders that allow the controllers to not only see where the airplane is, the altitude, its flight number. A plane that would be flying in controlled airspace that would not be responding to controllers would be a source of concern, but frankly, there's nothing they can do about it. They could uh, violate the pilot, they could fine him, all those sorts of things. Things, but a determined pilot willing to do something, there is nothing they can do about it. Can we zoom in on the airplane now uh, digitally? Let's see if we can get a little closer look. But this clearly looks like, and I'm just uh, from this angle, a 737, perhaps an A319 size airplane that looks very much like a, either a 737 or an A320, a, a plane that would carry over 100 passengers. Now, from the direction it's coming, we know Newark Airport is just about uh, 10 miles from the west of this. Uh, LaGuardia is another 10 or 12 miles to the east, but this plane is coming uh, east across the Hudson River as it makes its approach. That is clearly, uh, from, from the indications I'm looking at, is a, uh, uh, a small jet, small airliner-sized jet. Looks to me either an A320 or a 737-size uh, airplane. I I'm able to, of course, make out any markings, an airline or that, but... Uh, uh, again, there is nothing controllers could do if a Maverick pilot decided to leave his flight plan, decided to leave his course, and make a suicide plunge like we have witnessed here. Uh, we don't know. Uh, witnesses who saw the initial uh, hit of the airplane said it was also a twin-engine airplane. Some discrepancies as to the size. Some believe it was a small commuter-sized plane. This plane you're looking at is the one we saw hit the second tower a short time ago. And from every indication in this shot that we have pushed in on digitally here, it is clearly, you see the upward swing of, of the wings. It's a swept wing, a jet design, uh, two large uh, like high bat bypass engines uh, underneath. Susan Waldman is, uh, where are you, Susan? I'm on the Triborough Bridge, John, and I was on the Bruckner when that second plane just hit, um, so I really had a bird's eye view of this F. I saw the fireball from the first plane and then turned on uh, the, the radio, and as I was standing on the, uh, driving on the Bruckner trying to get to the bridge, I saw it looked like a twin-engine plane come over over the Hudson River and go right at the other tower. So I, I, I saw that, and the, the smoke is, is now just streaming towards Brooklyn. Um, the Triborough Bridge, obviously, is just at a, a standstill and, and backed up as police cars are going through. But I actually saw it looked like a, a big plane, and I'm not an expert at planes, but it looked like a, a, a pretty decent-sized plane come from the, from the Hudson River side and go straight into the second tower. Did it look like a jet? It looked like, I, I saw two engines. It looked like a big plane. I, I'm not a big plane person. Right. Um, it didn't look like a little tiny Cessna jet, if that's right. what you're asking. Well, yeah. and both both towers are on fire now. Both towers are on fire. It's all black smoke now. Um, as I was on the Bruckner before the second plane hit, I did see the fireball from that first, um, from the first plane that was hit. And then I saw this plane come across and hit the second tower. Where are you right now? I'm right on top of the Triborough Bridge. And it's all stopped? And it's all, well, it's moving slowly, but it's they're moving over to the sides for uh, police cars, obviously, right. are, are, are going, trying to get through here. But what I can see right now is just total black smoke uh, billowing out of the World Trade Center and just sort of floating towards, towards Brooklyn. And every, we're obviously moving very, very slowly. Excuse me, I'm shaking here. <laughs> As Lester Holt was saying, if in fact that was, it appeared to him to possibly be a 737, there is now an indication from the Associated Press that the FBI is investigating reports of an aircraft hijacking just before this World Trade Center disaster occurred. If in fact it was an airplane coming out of Newark Airport or one of the local airports that had been taken over by a hijacker, at least that is plausible at this point, and the FBI is said to be investigating that possibility right now. All right, Susan, thank you very much. Take care okay, of yourself. Okay, John. Thanks. Uh, Susan Waldman is there on the Trevor Bridge. It's, it's, I guess they're moving a little bit, but... But this is, uh, this is stunning. Yeah, I mean, and, and the implications are just unimaginable at this point. Well, I mean, it's, 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 there's no way to even describe no. it. No. 
But we have the actual video we're watching on there is MSNBC of the... Um, you can see the plane fly into the World Trade Center. Of the second aircraft yeah. <clears throat> approach the World Trade Center from over the Hudson River. And <clears throat> the film that if you haven't seen, you will see later, today sometime, you are seeing the, the back part of the explosion occur. The plane hits the other side of the World Trade Center, and the burst you see coming through is on, uh, is on this side, meaning that the explosion just erupted all through those floors of the building and came out the back. Right. Well, there's uh, just, uh, I don't know. <clears throat> and now report that the FBI is investigating the possibility of a plane having been hijacked. All right, well, we'll stay on top of this. So. You. I'm a product announcement, and I'm very late getting to our website. This could mess up our whole e-business. I'm sorry, sir, but your departure has been postponed. Now boarding all fat wire content for all Enterprise Cloud websites and web applications. What about all that content? They're boarding. That content is playing Fatwire. They're always on time. Could I upgrade to Fatwire software, please? Upgrade your content management capabilities. Visit Fatwire.com to register for an online seminar on effective content management. That's Fatwire.com. Commercials are more believable when real customers give a testimonial. So on the line with me is Karen Ellis, a Geico Auto Insurance customer. Karen, give us a testimonial. Well, of all the canned peaches I've tried, I think the ones in heavy syrup are the best. They're just good. There, a testimonial from a real live Geico customer who could save 15% or more on car insurance. Call 1-800-947-AUTO. 1-800-947-AUTO. Geico Direct, the sensible alternative. Highness! Are you losing your hair? Hi, I'm Jim Austin with an exciting new development in the treatment of hair loss. Here's Dr. Gordon, medical director at the Hair and Skin Treatment Center in New York. The FDA has reported that the body chemical dihydrotestosterone, commonly known as DHT, is the leading cause of hair loss. At our center, we've developed Avacor, a natural herbal treatment that stops DHT from attacking your hair follicles and starts regrowing hair in balding areas. Avacor's DHT blocker is all natural, safe, and effective. In six years of clinical use by thousands of men and women, the Avacor system regrew hair on virtually everyone. We guarantee Stop DHT from ruining your life. Call 800-876-6461. Now you can use this remarkable treatment risk-free for three full months. We're confident it's going to work for you. Call 800-876-6461. That's 800-876-6461. Hi, it's Glenn Cohen. One of the reasons I started YHD Realty was because I felt people were losing too much of their home's equity when it came time to sell. Friends of mine bought a home five years ago, and its value increased by $50,000. Unfortunately, when they sold it, they only walked away with half that. Why? They paid their traditional real estate agent a 6% commission. That's just too much money. At YHD Realty, we charge only a 2% commission and have top local agents to work with you every step of the way. Plus, we've already saved New Jersey homeowners over $14 million in real estate commissions. So don't give away the home equity you've worked years to build up. Call YHD Realty at 1-800-CALL-YHD. That's 1-800-CALL-YHD. Or visit our website at YHD.com. It's YHD for a lower fee. Total savings amount is based on total commissions paid on YHD listings versus total commissions that would have been paid if a 6% commission had been charged. All commissions are negotiable. I went to towns across Connecticut to see how customers feel about getting a year of free checking at Peoples. I asked Grady from Granby, Adam from Haddam, and Marianne from Darien. Guess what? They love it. Jill from Rocky Hill also loves the fact that when you get free checking at Peoples, you'll receive 50 free checks, but that's just the beginning. With Peoples Plus Checking, you can bank when, where, and how you want, by ATM, phone, or online. You can also enjoy the convenience of seven-day banking inside Super Stop and Shop. So join your neighbors throughout the state who love getting a year of free checking at Peoples. To open your account, do what Monty from Montville did and go to peoples.com. Or be like Wendy from Windsor and call 1-800-772-1090. Rich from Litchfield decided to open his account by visiting his nearest Peoples branch. Free checking, yet another tailored solution that's possible at Peoples. Just ask Charlie from Chaplin. 
Free of monthly maintenance and per check fees for one year from date account is opened. People's Bank. Member FDIC. Offer ends October 27th. I'm Lori McNichol for the Mohegan Sun Fan Highway Patrol, where the whole lower Manhattan area is at a standstill. The inbound battery tunnel is not moving. FDR Drive also not moving from 14th Street all the way down. Subways E, R, N, and six trains not stopping in the World Trade Center, Center area, and that includes Rector Street, Triborough, crawling in all directions. 30 minutes inbound at the Holland Tunnel, 45 minutes at the inbound Lincoln, and 20 to both decks at the inbound George Washington Bridge. The have forecast for today, sunshine and a high of about 82. The low tonight about 60, and right now it is 70 degrees. This report's brought to you by Panasonic. Panasonic invites you to experience the brilliance and clarity of high-definition television. But be warned, you'll never be satisfied with regular TV again. HDTV, made possible by Panasonic, now at The Wiz. I'm Lori McNichol for the Mohegan Sun Fan Highway Patrol. On the next Dope Pronos, the former head of the first family investigates the possibility of returning to power. Enough already. I gave him a chance, but Uncle Junior Bush just ain't getting it done. I mean, he's worried about illiteracy. He can't even read Curious George without moving his f***ing lips. He thinks stem cells are where flowers go to jail. But there's a little thing called the Constitution standing in the way. 22nd Amendment, don't make me laugh. There ain't a law in the books I couldn't find a loophole for. And the same goes for this only two terms bullshit. By the time I'm done, not only will the 22nd Amendment be repealed, I'll have them get rid of the 19th, too. That'll make my old lady happy, huh? Sorry, sweetheart, but women can't vote no more. Now go back in the kitchen and stir the sauce, you skank. Meanwhile, he finds himself missing his only daughter. Why she's got to go get her master's at Oxford, I don't know. I mean, it ain't like she's going to get drafted. And so he mulls over an offer from the heads of the royal family. Let me get this straight. You want me to come over there and help you bring back tourism because everybody's staying away, scared of mad cow disease? Why? Because I'm married to a man? But then, a bombshell. Newsweek prints excerpts from a new book suggesting that if Consigliere Sauter had one more day to plead his case, the new boss might not have been Uncle Junior Bush. And Tony Kennedy, if Davy the Forehead had his way, Allie would have been the made guy instead of being passed over for that numb nuts Georgie B. I'm telling you, leave it to a Kennedy to f*** things up. The Dopranos, just your average dysfunctional criminal family. Hey, Hillary, I just got off the phone with our daughter in England. She says they named the disease after you over there. Well, I was out of the room, so we had to go to that. It's 23 after the hours. Come back to Warner Wolf. Warner? Yeah, I'm in. So what do you see now? I'm looking out my window south, and I see the north side, the, the, the tower on the right, which was hit first. It's a, just a gigantic hole. It's closer to the top than the tower that was hit on the left. Right. It's, and the smoke is, you know, that's the thing. There's people in there that... that God sakes, the smoke will kill them. It's horrible. And the smoke is just rising up, especially the tower on the left. And the hole, now you can see uh, that smoke has diminished a little, the tower on the right. You can see the hole. It's like two, two monster holes with a little partition in the middle. And on the one on the left, it's harder to see because the smoke is still bellowing up. Oh, God, and then the fire is still on the left. The one on the right, you, you you can't see fire on the right, but the one on the left, you can still see the fire. And, of course, you you, you know that that's, besides all the businesses, it's, it's also uh, the mass transit. You have the subway in there. I've taken that many times. It's, uh, yeah. it, oh, this is horrible. And then they, uh, we saw, we actually, they actually have footage of the plane flying into the other World Trade Center. And we saw that, and there was a tremendous television here, what they're doing. We have standing by on the phone uh, Joe Cantamesa, former lead investigator for the attack on the World Trade Center in 1993. Joe, if you'd continue to stand by, but just to set this up for people who are just joining us, let's go back over to Lester Holt to explain exactly what unfolded just a short time ago. Lester? When we went on the air at 9 o'clock, uh, one tower was already burning, and then after a few minutes, while we were all watching live, another air airplane appeared in the picture. Let's punch up, if we can, that shot, and I'll give you an idea of exactly what happened here. Uh, this is the other airplane. I'm going to tell us straight here. Can we punch that up full? Okay, we're going to try and get it up here in a second, but, uh, and there it, okay, we're rewinding. But it was a uh, airliner. There it is. That one right there. 
flies directly into the other tower that had previously been untouched right through the tower. The airplane, if we can go back to that frozen shot, is clearly a commercial airliner of some sort. Uh, it has all the telltale marks of a commercial airliner, a swept wing, uh, two big engines slung underneath. It is very difficult to tell what kind of airplane that is, but clearly the big high bypass, those big fat engines under each wing, that is a commercial airliner. NBC's Andrea Mitchell, our chief foreign affairs correspondent, joins us now from Washington with more information. Andrea, what do you have? Lester, I've just talked to a top U.S. official who tells me that their early reports are that at least one of those planes was a hijacked American Airlines plane en route from Boston to Los Angeles. That's one of the two planes. This same official says that there was no uh, no terror alert other than the usual worldwide caution. They had no warnings on bin Laden or other types of terror alerts coming into our intelligence community. But a senior U.S. official says that they are early reports, and we should caution that early reports in these kinds of incidents are often incorrect. But this early report coming to a top U.S. official is that at least one of the two planes was a hijacked American Airlines plane en route from Boston to Los Angeles. Lester? Uh, we should say American Airlines operates uh, 737s and 757s, both of which might seem similar to what we see there. Andrea, tell us there's got to be a game plan of the U.S. government for something of this magnitude. What is kicking into the works right now as we speak? Primarily the FBI. This is the kind of operation that would be immediate response from the FBI. Now, you know after the World Trade Trade Center bombing some years ago that New York created, uh, to some criticism in fact, but Mayor Giuliani created an emergency response center and spent a great deal of money. There is an emergency center in New York City. There have been drills. Now, many cities in the country, including New York, have not passed all of their drills, but there have been emergency response teams recently reorganized within the past year to try to centralize the emergency response mechanism so that it is not as diffuse. There were so many different agencies that would respond uh, to the possibility of bioterror, to any kind of chemical alert. So what they discovered is that the big effort by the Clinton administration to respond to these kinds of things was not up to snuff according to preliminary reviews by the new administration, and they were trying to streamline that approach. In fact, uh, one of the top officials in charge of anti-terror responses domestically was moved sort of sidelined, and a new team within the NSC was being created. And one of the things we should point out is that America is virtually defenseless to a maverick or a hijacked airplane. We still have primarily Air National Guard units, air defense units based on the uh, coasts of uh, the United States to look for intruders, drug intruders, uh, uh, bombers, other airplanes that may try to penetrate U.S. airspace, but they are not geared up to, to deal with a threat that may come from within U.S. airspace, which may be the case here, and even if they were aware of it, if these planes were in fact carrying passengers, as that report would indicate, they would be defenseless to do anything about it. Uh, we, have, exactly. uh, we have looked at this, this shot over and over again, and it, this plane appears to be under complete control and aimed directly uh, at the Trade Center. Let's uh, put up that shot again now, if we can give you a better idea of the airplane that we saw. This was the second attack, and here it is. Clearly um, guiding directly. Tell them I have the, to go back. Clearly guiding directly into that tower. Uh, these are planes that have two cockpit members usually: the captain and the uh, first officer. Uh, the cockpits are locked. Uh, you, we all know about metal detectors and all that sort of thing. But if someone poses a threat, uh, you know, presents a weapon, threatens a weapon, who knows what could happen on an airplane here? Uh, and the question is, you, you look at this and you wonder who could possibly uh, uh, fly an airplane directly into a, a building, even a, a, a cockpit member under some sort of duress. You wonder how difficult it would be to, to, to aim a plane directly. And there it is. Uh, and I want to point out what we were seeing here that made it clear to us that this was a. You know, that this was a uh, airliner. There's two engines there. See the engine slung beneath the wings? That is a, a typical layout of a commercial jetliner, and there the wings sweep back there. I've kind of messed up the picture. President Bush is speaking. Let's listen. Second. Education. I do want to thank the folks here at, uh, at the Booker Elementary School for their hospitality. Uh, today we've had a national tragedy. Uh, two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. I have spoken to the Vice President, to the Governor of New York, to the Director of the FBI, and have ordered that the full resources of the federal government 
uh, go to help the victims and their families and, the, and to conduct a full-scale investigation to hunt down and to find those folks who committed this act. Terrorism against our nation will not stand. And now if you join me in a moment of silence. May God bless the victims, their families, and America. Thank you very much. And the indication we are getting is that President will get on a plane and head immediately to Washington, D.C. His events canceled. In case you're just now joining us, planes crashed into the upper floors of both World Trade Center towers minutes apart just a short time ago. A horrific scene of Well, I've been listening to a feed from MSNBC, and uh, as, uh, we can tell you that two, uh, two apparently commercial airliners... Uh, both apparently hijacked, we don't have much more information than that, have, uh, well, been hijacked and flown into uh, both both the towers of the World Trade Center in New York City in the financial district in New York City. And uh, we don't know much more about that other than that the FBI is investigating. They report that these planes were hijacked, one apparently in American Airlines from Boston to New York. Boston to Los Angeles. Boston to Los Angeles. Th that was Andrea Mitchell's, uh, after she... That was her information after she discussed this with some high officials. Yeah, and then uh, the other plane we don't know, United Airlines. Well, there was, a, there was at least one suggestion that it could have been a United Airlines aircraft. But, I mean, <clears throat> a, 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 a scene right out of a, one of these uh, uh, New Line Cinema movies. Absolutely. I mean, just an awful scene. Within either building, perhaps the top 20 floors of either building uh, on fire. And... Uh, it's shortly, <clears throat> they both happen around 9 o'clock Eastern Time, one, one, the, one before 9 o'clock, about 10, 12 minutes before 9 o'clock, uh, and the other uh, about 10 minutes after that. Charles, do you have any information? Uh, a senior U.S. official says at least one of two planes was, in fact, the hijacked American Airlines aircraft, as we mentioned, en route from Boston to Los Angeles. Um, the president just spoke, we you know, um, and is heading back to Washington, canceling the rest of his schedule today. Uh, the top at least, 20 at least 20 floors are still on fire. There's been no communication or anyone at this point claiming responsibility. Um, skies, as is pointed out here, are perfectly clear this morning in New York, and so the likelihood of any plane having accidentally strayed from its intended flight path into the World Trade Center is almost impossible. Oh. Mayor Giuliani holding a news conference at the corner of Park Place and Church Street in Manhattan about what has happened, this absolutely horrific, unbelievable scene in the financial district of New York City this morning. No word at this point on what has happened so far as casualties are concerned. There was one early report, un unconfirmed, that uh, perhaps a half dozen fatalities had been, uh, had been reported, but... Uh, There's no traffic being let into the city. You can leave uh, the outbound George uh, Washington Bridge and Lincoln Tunnel, but that is it. Other than that, you can't get in or out really? of the city. Mm -hmm. so. so they have sealed off uh, New York City, at least certainly Manhattan. And we are in uh, across the 59th Street Bridge in Queens, right, where we apparently will be for a while. All of the New York airports are closed, the Lincoln Tunnel closed. Until they, uh, well, well, until they can make some further determination of, a, of what's exactly going on. what has what, what has happened here and who, who, who what agency or agents are responsible well, who, who for did this. this? Yes, I'm. I will let you know what's going on. I must in the morning. Let's discuss smells. You know, those familiar odors that tickle your olfactory senses. For example, there's the. Mm, Everyone is interested in something from yoga to Yugoslavia, Brad Pitt to biology. And at Content Store, Contentville.com, you can get everything about anything at great prices. With Contentville's cross-content search, you'll find books, magazines, articles, dissertations, and more on whatever interests you, all with the click of a mouse. All items are downloadable or shipped to you within 48 hours. 
Contentville offers magazine subscriptions with fast first issue delivery. Order a subscription today from Contentville's selection of over 800 titles, and your first issue will be in the mail to you within 48 hours, not 48 days. And Contentville sells magazine subscriptions at the lowest authorized price on the web. Come to Contentville now and save 90% off the cover price of New York Magazine, 74% off 17, or choose from many other great offers. So visit Contentville.com today. That's C-O-N-T-E-N-T-V-I-L-L-E.com to find everything about anything at great prices. Does your vacuum cleaner earn its keep? Hi, I'm David Oreck. My 8-pound Oric XL is so powerful, it cleans the world's finest hotels. Yet it uses one-third as much electricity as most other uprights. Try my Oric XL risk-free, and I'll give you my $100 cordless iron as a gift. Call 1-800-989-4200. That's 1-800-989-4200. Nobody works harder to give you more value for your money than I do. <laughs> Hey, Joe, why so bummed out? You've got the key to the executive washroom. Well, the old man raised my sales quota and cut my budget again. I may as well flush this key. Try WebEx. With WebEx, tech support cut call times in half. Training delivers classes online in real time and saves a bundle in travel costs. I can use WebEx meetings to make more sales calls at a fraction of the cost. Maybe I'll keep this key after all. Uh-oh. W-E-B-E-X dot com. Try it. Well, NBC News is reporting that an American Airlines plane has been hijacked, was hijacked, and crashed into the World Trade Center. Clearly the worst attack on American soil since Pearl Harbor. Absolutely. Uh, and if both planes were hijacked, I mean, it could be two or three hundred people on each plane, a couple hundred anyway, 150, whatever. Who knows how many people are in the World Trade Center? <clears throat> Who knows if this is some sort of orchestrated attack on... CNN is reporting that the aircraft was an American 767. And I wondered, because of the size of the engines that is indicated in that oh, footage we've seen plane, so far, 767 is a very large aircraft. And uh, there are reports now of at least 1,000 injuries, although that figure is not confirmed, and then this is going to be going on for a while, as they just try to come to grips with just the, 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 the size of the potential of the disaster. Is Miklaszewski on the air now? Pot him up on your arm. Uh, whether it was an accident or what is going on, we're going to try to find those details and get them to you as soon as possible. Uh, but interestingly enough, uh, one intelligence official here in the building said when he saw what appeared to be the coordinated attack on the World Trade Center, his advice was to stay away from the outside of the building today just in case. Now again, nobody has any indications uh, of exactly what happened. But it appears that there has been some kind of, it felt like a small blast of some kind. Again, the window shook, uh, the, the building shook, the windows rattled, and people, if uh, I'm looking out the window now, and, uh, and the construction workers are still keeping a good, oh, I'm sorry. The construction workers are still keeping a distance. That's all I can see. Uh, and I see no other extracurricular security activity right outside. But to get more information, I'm going to have to break away and, and walk down the hallway okay. and see what it is exactly that happened here see, just a few moments ago. Mick, see what you can find out. Please be careful and let us know what's going what on. What appears here. to have Meanwhile, been a twin terrorist to attack on the World Trade Center, two planes minutes apart deliberately crashing into the upper floors of the World Trade Center on the southern tip of Manhattan. The uh, New York Stock Exchange is closed. All airports in New York are closed. The Lincoln Tunnel is closed. The Situation Room uh, is now the focus of attention uh, in the nation's capital. The president on his way back from Florida to Washington, Condoleezza Rice, national security advisor and other top officials now heading to the Situation Room at the White House. Chris? President George W. Bush was in Sarasota, Florida. He was reading to children in a classroom when he was uh, whispered into his ear by his chief of staff, Andrew Card, about what had happened at the World Trade Center. A short time later, he appeared on national television calling this an apparent terrorist attack. Exactly now, happened. these are the pictures the picture right now outside of the According Pentagon. To one US Army Let's listen officer to Jim Mikluszewski, our Pentagon correspondent. A full trot. He said that uh, it appears that a bomb was detonated uh, at the heliport. 
the heliport is a helicopter landing area right next to the uh, Pentagon, uh, just adjacent to the E-ring. Uh, the offices nearest the, the, uh, the uh, heliport area uh, are U.S. Army uh, Reserve uh, officers uh, and, and the Army Reserve uh, our offices are located there. Uh, but as you can see, it appears to be uh, a pretty significant blast. Uh, to give you some perspective, we are almost on the opposite side of the building, the world's largest office building. And as I reported to you, we could feel the building shake and the windows rattle. And as I was in the hallway just a few moments ago, uh, I could smell uh, uh, an accurate kind of smoke. So the report we have now is that a bomb has gone off at the Pentagon. Uh, in the, in some place at a helipad, uh, near a heliport, according to Jim Mikulaszewski, who's there at the Pentagon. There is further report now from the New Jersey State Police that all Hudson River bridges and tunnels have been closed as a precaution in the wake of this apparent double terrorist attack on the World Trade Center towers. And 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 and. and, and Yeah, I'm sure. I'm 